Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabbi ajma'in. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to Dr. Rabi'ah Abiduddin, our head of Department of Political Science. Dr. Nur Hasnin Jamaluddin, our academic advisor 1. Uh, Dr. Lee Bayme, our academic advisor 2 and all political students who are joining us today. It is my pleasure to welcome you here this morning and I would like to thank you for joining us today. I am your MC for today. My name is Najwan Arif, uh, financial controller 2 for Secretary of Political Science. And once again, welcome to Political Science Best Gathering 2021, specially brought to you by the Secretary of the Political Science. Without any further delay, let us begin with the recitation of Umur Kitab Al-Fatihah. Amin, amin, ya Rabbal Alamin. Brothers and sisters, uh, uh, moving right along, it is my pleasure to invite Dr. Rabia Aminji, our head of department, uh, to give a welcoming remark. Please welcome. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can everyone hear me? Yes, clear. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you to POSA for organizing this uh, briefing for our new students and i would like to welcome all of you to the department of political science uh, kulia of islamic review knowledge and human sciences um, on behalf of the department uh, i think we are very glad to have you here uh, despite all the challenges despite the the not being able to physically meet but i think it has also opened a new windows of opportunity for us to reach out to you in different platforms uh, on different platforms and using different methods nevertheless um, we are looking forward to have you in the department and we are looking forward to meet our future generation of leaders and i think um, <clears throat> please do not be disheartened if we cannot meet face to face um, there might be some challenges along the way but i believe that it is something that will open or will help us to learn how to maneuver difficult period um, uh, with ease later on inshallah okay um, i don't want to take too many times uh, too much times uh, i think uh, after this we will have uh, you will be uh, you will be uh, enlightened about the program structure about what is uh, going on in the department of political science what kind of courses you can take by dr nohaslinda and also dr lee all right but before that i would like to share with you um, what is the department about right i would like to uh, share with you what is uh, what is the department who are the department members and what are the cultures in the department that we are uh, we want to emphasize our students on yeah uh, can can we have the slides okay thank you very much all right um so alhamdulillah i am very glad to meet you here and although not all lecturers are here with you now but uh, i will introduce you to your lecturers who will be with you during your journey in the department of political science yeah so welcome to all political scientists um and i hope that you are happy also to be with us in the department yeah next okay so a bit of introduction to the department of political science so that you know that what department that you belong to and why you should be proud to be part of the department yeah So the department is 31 years old this year inshallah it was established in 1990 um, as part of the kulia of islamic revival knowledge and human sciences so it is almost as old as um, the university itself only a few years younger than the university so you can see that the department is one of the earliest department established in the uh, iium right so what is the difference 
of IUM political science department with other departments, other political science departments in other universities. Why you are here in IIUM? So in uh, the Department of Political Science in IIUM, our mission is that we want to have political science graduates who are not only well equipped with modern political theories, modern political knowledge, but we are also equipped with Islamic political knowledge and skills. So that you know that you are not here just as a political scientist, but you are here as a Muslim political scientist. And we know that we are lacking of good Muslim political scientists in the Muslim world nowadays. So we want to produce Muslim political scientists, right? Who are very much well-versed in the Quran and Sunnah, as well as we embody Islamic values in our conducts, right? So it's not just about being a good political scientist in the secular sense, but also we have Islamic values in our political conducts, in our daily life conducts, right? So our aim also is to be a recognized reference center in the Muslim world, especially for political affairs. This is something that is really lacking in the Muslim world. And this is where the Department of Political Science wants to come in and to contribute to the Ummah, right? So currently, in order to achieve this, in order to to, to produce good graduates, good political science graduates, and in order to be a good pol uh, political science reference center, we have about 15 academic staff and one administrative staff in the department. So please know your lecturers, please know the members of the department, because sometimes I get mistaken as a sir, right? I am not a sir. Okay, so sometimes you address people in, 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 in different ways, right? So it's good to know who are the members of your department, right? And also it's good to know who are your teachers, who are your lecturers, okay? That you will be sharing your knowledge, right? You will be sharing the journey with uh, along this line, right? So after this, you can get to share also, you, get, you can share with your seniors who are the good ones, who are the, the strict ones, right? So that you can make your minds up when you want to register for classes later on. That one I will not touch here, but you will have to ask your seniors about the uh, lecturer style of teaching and whatnot, right? Okay, next. Okay, so I am Dr. Rabi Aminuddin. I am the head of the department. So in many ways, right, I am currently the task of the head of department is to manage the administration of the department, not only about the student affairs, but also about the staff affairs, right? So in, in many ways, I am very much involved in all areas of management of the department, in managing the department, yeah? And uh, most of your forms will go through me, okay? So uh, please get my name right, please get my salutation, right? Okay, so who is helping the department? We have Sister Azura, or she is fondly known as Kazura. Okay, she is the secretary of the department. So please, uh, if you have anything, any issues related to your studies, you have to address to the right person. Kazura or Sister Azura is here only to help with receiving your forms, for example. Or if you are not sure who to contact with regarding certain matters you can refer to sister azura okay so please know okay this is your head of department this is the secretary of the department okay so secretary of the department is not your secretary but the secretary of the department okay so sometimes i am emphasizing this because there are times when students uh, have uh, negative attitudes when they are dealing with the department staff, right? So please uh, make sure that uh, we treat each other with respect and uh, with, uh, with respect mainly, yeah? So if you want to ask for help from Sister Azura, please make sure you address her uh, nicely as well, right? So she is the one who is in charge of administration administration matters in the department, not only about the student matters, but also the staff, okay? So please make sure that when you contact Sister Azura, you want to know who you want to contact about your certain issues, okay? Don't, don't, don't get mad at her, okay? All right, next. 
Okay, so we have our academic advisor one, Dr. Noor Haslinda Jamayuddin. I think Dr. Noor Haslinda is here. Okay, so this is the person that this is the lecturer that you will deal with and you should, it sh she should be the one that you trust the most. Okay, so Dr. Noor Haslinda is the academic advisor one, meaning that she is in charge of advising students related to their academic matters okay so for example if you have issues related to your classes right and if you want to consult her regarding your study plan okay meaning that what are the subjects that you should take what are the subjects that you should not take as well so she should be the one that you consult with right dr norhas linda Okay, so please make sure sometimes students, they do listen to their seniors, right? The advice of their seniors. If you listen to the advice of your seniors, confirm it with the academic advisor. Okay, so why we are emphasizing on this? Because there are many, many times when students listen to the advice of their senior and they find out that they have problems later with their study plan. Right? For example, the subjects are no longer offered or the subjects are not offered in the graduating semester. And this has posed a lot of troubles to the department. Right? So sometimes students might need to extend their study just because they don't get the subjects that they sh should register earlier. So please consult with Dr. Nohas Linda. All right? Uh, regarding your study plan, regarding your academic matters, and if you want to, you face any issues during your study period where you have, uh, you need to take leave of absence, for example, you may also consult her. Okay, and we also have academic advisor to Dr. Lee Pei Mei, right? Dr. Lee Pei Mei is helping Dr. Nohas Linda in carrying out the duty of academic advisor. Yeah. So these two persons are the one that you should consult with when you have any issue related to your study matters. Okay, next. Okay, and then apart from uh, the uh, academic advisor, we also have student advisor, right? So we have Dr. Rohana and also Dr. Laujare, and they mainly will... Uh, liars with a uh, political science students association or POSA, right? So any uh, activities, any student activities, you may consult them, right? Uh, so these are the two uh, lecturers who are in charge of uh, student as student advisor, okay? Next. Okay, and then we have FYP coordinator. Okay, so FYP is final year project for you first year and second year students. So you will need to take final year project later on as part of your study where you will conduct, I emphasize you will conduct independent research later on uh, when you achieve uh, or when, uh, in your third year, inshallah, right? So for FYP coordinator is Dr. Afdi Smailai, right? So Dr. Afdi is the one who is in charge of FYP coordinator. This is important even though you are in your first and second year because you need to plan carefully, right? When do you want to take your FYP? Okay, this is because FYP1 is only offered in SEM1 and FYP2 is only offered in SEM2. So what happened when you are taking FYP1 in semester two is that if the department do not have, does not have enough manpower, then you have to extend your study. Okay, so please make sure you plan your study, you plan your courses accordingly with the advice of the academic advisor. Okay, so this is very important because this is part of the graduation requirement. So even though you are in your first year, in your second year, you should already plan when do you want to take your FYP. Okay, because FYP1 is only offered in SEM1 and FYP2 is only offered in semester two. So some of your seniors uh, applied to have FYP in semester one, uh, FYP1 in semester two, they are lucky if they ha we have enough manpower. If we do not have enough lecturers to supervise FYP2 in semester one, then they have to extend. 
So this is not something that we want for our students. So please, please make sure that when you plan your study plan for your years in IIUM, you also include the consideration of FYP arrangement. Okay. And then we also have Dr. Shaza Farhana Shukri. Okay. So we have Dr. Avdis Malai and also Dr. Shaza. Okay. Next. Okay. And then we have Dr. Zahid Zamri. Uh, he is uh, the latest addition to the department, inshallah, next semester, he will be teaching uh, uh, you, the new students, right? Um, this Dr. Zahid and also Dr. Mio Alif, both of them are in the area of political theory and political philosophy, yeah? Okay, next. And then we have Dr. Ishtia, Prof. Ishtia Hussein and Prof. Al-Fatih, right? Uh, so these are these two are the legend of the department. Yeah. So you will be taking courses with them maybe in your third year, in your fourth year, but you will be hearing a lot uh, about them. Uh, yeah. So they are in international relations, profate in, in, in political Islam and conflict studies. Yeah. Next. And then we also have associate professor Dr. Munir Zaman. All right. Uh, he is. Uh, his areas is in international political economy, in minority studies, in South Asian politics, and we also have uh, Dr. Tunku Mohar, who is uh, expert in international relations, Malaysian politics. If you want to know more about Malaysian politics, you can discuss with Dr. Mohar. Yeah? He is an expert in Malaysian politics. Okay. Next. And then we have uh, Associate Professor Dr. Zainal Abidin Sanusi. So many of you have to take, I think the new students will have to take sustainable classes, right? Your, your, your NGS includes sustainable uh, classes. And this is uh, the area of uh, Dr. Zainal. Apart from being the department member, he is also the chair of the Sejahtera Center in IIUM. Yeah? So we have, if, if you can see the department members are very diverse, Right, uh, consists of Malaysian and non uh, Malaysians, right, international and Malaysian uh, professors. So I think this is something that we are very proud of in the department that we have diverse members with diverse uh, research areas, right, so that you can benefit as students, you can benefit from this diversity of lecturers in the department. Yeah. Okay, next. Okay, thank you. So in the department, we have four specialization areas in which we have comparative politics, international relations, public administration and public policy, and also political theory. So these four areas of specialization, you can see in your study plan, what are the courses that falls under the four areas of specialization, and you can mix and match the courses. Or if you want to, it's very rare that you can actually specialize in one uh, specialized areas, um, but most of us will do mix and match, where we will take some courses from political theory, from comparative politics, from international relations, it's not wrong, right? Uh, it, it makes you a very much uh, well-versed in all the spectrum of political science, yeah? Next. Okay, so this is what I really want to emphasize on, on the culture of the Department of Political Science, because I believe that this, it is very, very important to set what are the expectations of what kind of behaviors, uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of attitudes that we are practicing in the department so that the new students also can have a sense of what, uh, what is the department like. Right, especially when we are far away and you are not physically in the department, right? So first of all, professionalism. This is something that I emphasize a lot to all my students because we are political scientists and professionalism is something that we really need, right? What are the examples of professionalism? For example, very simple matters when you send email to your lecturers, when you send email to outsiders, in the capacity of the department, uh, in your in the capacity of a student of the department, for example, do send email with good etiquette, right? And trust me, um, there is no such thing in the department of the lecturers trying to harm the students or whatnot. So I think there are sometimes that these kind of rumors can travel around, but 
the lecturers, all of my colleagues are very professional in their jobs. Okay, so there might be instances where there might be conflict between students and lecturers. We do resolve the conflict professionally. Okay, so if there are any issues, you discuss with the department in a professional manner, right? So professionalism is something that I really emphasize on because it shows the moral values that is embedded in an individual as well as the kind of values that we practice in the department. Okay. Second is good ethics and moral values. This is also very important. Okay, when we are having all this online based learning, it is very easy for us to fall into doing something that is unethical, for example, cheating, uh, plagiarizing, right? So all of these uh, good ethics and moral values, we should emphasize in ourselves, right? Plagiarizing is something that is an offense. So when you do your paper later on, right? When you do your exam, when you do your assignments later on, this is not uh, plagiarism, cheating, right? Is something that is not tolerable in the by the department, right? Not by the department, not by the kuliah. Okay. So and third is respect and honor. This is something that is also very important because. We respect you as our students. We recognize you as an individual, as an adult. And we are hoping that we will get the same. Uh, we, you will reciprocate the respect and honor that you give, that the lecturers give to the students and also the students give to the lecturers, right? So it is a mutual relationship, mutual respectful and honorable relationship between the lecturers and the students, okay? And last but not least, our department is one of the department that has diverse staff members and also we have diverse students, right? Students come from various backgrounds which fit in with our name as International Islamic University of Malaysia, right? So when we are talking about diversity and integration, we are talking about learning from each other's culture, right? So, and this might be more difficult with the online based learning and you are not physically in, on campus, but I believe that we should mingle around with people outside of our circle, right? And we should respect the culture of others, right? And when I am talking about the culture of others as uh, Malaysians should respect the culture of international students, right? International students also should respect the culture of Malaysia. So we find a middle ground in which all of us can live in harmony and peacefully. Because usually diversity is an issue, especially when it involves class assignments, class tasks, right? So hopefully we can learn to respect each other, right? If you feel that your culture is very different and your group mates do not understand your point of view, do discuss. If you find that they are not able to, you can discuss with the lecturer on how to resolve this issue. Okay? All right. Next. Okay, so what are the skills that you will gain as a political scientist? First of all is data analysis, right? This is something that is very important. I am talking about what are the skills you will gain if you are involved in the learning process carefully. Okay, so you are able to gain the data analysis skills, right? You will learn on how to prepare policy positions and also importantly to, perform, uh, to, to, to form strategic plans based on the data analysis. And I think this is very important because when we are talking about political scientists, people will ask, what about us? What, what do we gain from political science? Because engineering, they will learn all this mechanical or this technical stuff law students they will have legal knowledge but what about political science we are like the jack of all trades and master of none but these are the skills that you will gain if you involve yourself in the learning process fully right if you prepare yourself and you have this mindset that these are the skills that i want to gain so you will not gain these skills if you are cheating if you are plagiarizing if you only let your group mates to do your works Okay, so this is something that we will learn, okay, if we are involved in the learning process, 
Yeah, next. Okay, so these are the possible future career paths, right? So I don't want to say that because people will say, what are the jobs? What is the job for political scientists? Are you going to be a politician? Yes, you can be a politician, but being a politician is not the only career path of political scientists. And if you look, most politicians they, in Malaysia, they don't end up being a politician themselves, but they end up working with politicians as personal aides, as research officer, right? So there are many, many paths that you can choose to be. Many of your seniors, for example, are in financial industry, right? So these are the, few, the potential career path that you can be in provided, uh, so there is a disclaimer, provided that you are able to gauge all the skills that I have mentioned earlier. Okay, next. Okay, so what are my advices as your HOD, um, as someone to welcome these young, bright brains, right, from all over the world, not only uh, Malaysians, but uh, from all over the world, right? So we are looking forward to have you, to engage with you as our uh, new future leaders, right? So some of the advices might be maximize the opportunities of your undergraduate years, uh, your youth, your passion, right? So you are young once, okay? So I am not young anymore. So I think we should be, you should be able to maximize your youth, right? So there are a lot of advantages that comes with your you right and your passion your passion should be the one that drives you what you want to be in the future so please maximize these opportunities i know for some of you it might be difficult because of all these you know obstacles these constraints but believe me if you are able to navigate your way through this you are prepared for a much more challenging years ahead inshallah second is network and make friends make friends because when you are a student, right, the friends that you make during your student years are the genuine friends, right? So these are the friends that you will carry from your student years until you are old, okay? So network and make friends. Don't be in your circle or don't be only in your cocoon, right? Try to make friends. It doesn't matter if you don't have many friends, but try to know as many people as possible right? Uh, as much as you can, okay? Third, is something that I really want political science students to be more active, participate in classes and engage with your lecturers. If you have ideas, feel free, feel brave to uh, share your ideas, right, in front of your friends, because I think this is one thing that uh, will make your life, you will learn on how to make mistakes in front of the in, make mistakes in front of people and you will learn that it's nothing much sharing your ideas you have a lot of ideas i believe that we have many brilliant brains many brilliant minds but sometimes they choose not to participate right um, you can participate in classes engage with your lecturers right learn from them as much as you can because these are the opportunities when you go when you graduate you will not have similar opportunities to engage with someone as close as with your lecturers in the department. Number four is something that is, I think, make mistakes, make mistakes, make mistakes and learn from your mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, right? So many times students are too afraid to make mistakes because they, they are afraid that it will affect their CGPA. Trust me. Perhaps as a student, your CGPA is the biggest thing in your life. But when you graduate, your CGPA becomes only a small part of your life, right? So what matters most is that you learn from your mistakes and you become better. If you don't make mistakes, you cannot be better, right? So take the feedback from your classmates, from your lecturers, and make progress out of it, okay? Don't, don't take it as an offense, right? Because believe me, I know all my colleagues, whenever they give feedback, it is to improve the student. Number five, as I want to really emphasize on this, plagiarism is a big offense, right? 
you can get dismissed for plagiarizing, right? And as this has become a dorm, right? Please take note that plagiarism is a big offense and it will not help you to become a learned person if you plagiarize, yeah? And also number six, learn to make friends with people outside of your circle, make friends with your seniors, make friends from people of other kuliah, right? Make friends with your lecturers even, meaning that you learn to go out of your comfort zone and this is the perfect moment, right? Perfect moment for you to actually expand your reach and expand your paradigm of the world, right? Okay. So I know that um, many of you are, we are from different generation. You are much more uh, comfortable with online uh, networking and whatnot. Whatever it is, learn to make friends with people outside of your circle, despite the platform, right? But it is also always beautiful to have, uh, how to say this, learn how to connect with people physically, right? So it, it is always nice also, because sometimes we are so used on with online thing, we forgot how to connect with people in the real world as well, right? So I think that is all from me. I think I think this that is my last slide, right? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have to leave after this, but I hope that you will have good session with Dr. Noha Slinda and Dr. Lipe May, right? And I would like to again welcome you to the Department of Political Science and Inshallah, in three and four years time, we will see you as our graduates and we are looking forward to engage with you when you have graduated and you come back and return to us and tell us that how your studentship years in IIUM in the Department of Political Science has actually changed your life, right? So we are looking forward to not only to have you here, but we are also already foreseeing meeting you again when you have graduated as someone who is successful in your life inshallah okay okay with that assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you dr rabia for an insightful welcoming remark and also for introducing our department members on for fruitful these advices Friendly reminder to all new intake students, please fill in the attendance form as it is compulsory. You may find the link in the chat box. Next, we are going to show a video of our alumni from political science sharing experience throughout their study in RIUM. Assalamualaikum everyone, my name is Abrahim Ismail. I graduated in Bachelor of Political Science from IIUM in 2019 and right now I'm working on my thesis for my master's degree in Political Science as well at IIUM. So first of all, I would like to congratulate each of you for you know starting your journey for your undergraduate with uh, Department of Political Science, IIUM. Congratulations. In this video, I would like to share with you about my experience uh, on my academic uh, extracurricular and also my internship as well. So uh, during my three and a half year of my undergraduate journey, I took a lot of like international, international relations subjects. I took uh, international political economy, uh, international law, international organization, US foreign policy, Islam in contemporary Southeast Asia, and also post-Soviet politics. I think post-Soviet politics is now called Russian uh, foreign policy. I took a, a lot of like these uh, international relations subjects because it interests me, it excites me. I really enjoy learning it. One, one, one uh, other subject that I really love was women in politics, whereby it gave me um, in, an insight of how women is seen in politics, how religion sees women in politics, not only Islam, but also other religion as well. So um, during my bachelor degree, I developed a very strong uh, interest with Southeast Asia, especially with the ASEAN uh, organization. I love to see how the dynamic cooperation among the countries, the diplomacy relationship among the countries, and also how uh, the, the, the development of the region as a whole and also how they unite 
the people of this region. It's very excites me and you know it's a very interesting thing to, to, to focus on. It helped me a lot with my uh, assignments, with my internship as well. So it's very important for you to have something that you're very passionate about, something that you want to uh, study in depth, you want to you know focus a lot on. Uh, well, it it gonna it gonna help you in 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 many aspects, especially with your uh, FYP you're gonna do in your I guess in your final year. Uh, well, you can you can start now though. I mean, you can find a lot of like uh, topics that you can uh, focus on, be it human rights, you know, uh, gender equality. Um, you know climate change and all there's a lot of like possibilities you can you can focus on <clears throat> so um you might want also to you know be active outside of your class uh i was an active student back then i joined a lot of like societies at club i joined uh theater and also i do sports i represent my um uh, iium IOM Mustangs um, to the Sukip and Open competition for Taekwondo and also rowing. So I represent Malaysia quite a few times. Uh, I I was a Malaysian representative to the Six Asia Europe Foundation uh, Rectors Conference and uh, Student Forum in Singapore 2017, whereby we developed policy recommendation for. Asia Europe uh, Ministry of Education. Uh, I also represent Malaysia to the uh, Young Southeast Asia Leaders Initiative. Uh, it was a regional workshop on economic engagement in Hanoi 2017. Uh, it was uh, fully funded by the US uh, State Department. And also I I joined this like one uh, conference. Uh, it's called uh, International Association for Political Science Student Academic Convention, whereby I presented a paper there in Singapore in 2018. So, uh, I traveled a lot, quite a lot back then. Uh, I've visited also uh, United Nations headquarters in New York, United States. Um, it was a very memorable experience. You know, uh, it, it was not easy at first. Uh, I started small. I joined this small small organization and you know small events and all from there you find uh, you'll meet new people you can explore new things you know you can know a lot of like other new things as well so uh, this extracurricular activities really help me you know um, well very important for you to to you know to balance it with your studies and also extracurricular of course, your academic comforts and you know, these are the supplements to your academy. Um, these extracurricular activities really helped me to secure an internship. I did my internship with the ASEAN Foundation. Uh, I was assigned under the ASEAN Farmers Organization Support Program, whereby I uh, helped in uh, desk research also social media content. I assisted the uh, my, my supervisor to develop the uh, ASEAN roadmap on agriculture cooperation. This this internship helped me to develop another interest, which um, I use it right now for my master's degree. My thesis revolving around agriculture sector, so uh, I focus on the. Uh, readiness of governance to adapt to climate change, especially in agricultural sector. I also did another internship last year in 2019 with the permanent mission of Malaysia to ASEAN. I worked directly with the embassy. Uh, I worked with the ambassador or to be specific, the permanent mission, uh, permanent representative for Malaysia to ASEAN. I attended various uh, high level ASEAN meetings we uh, in ASEAN Secretary. Um, well, I drafted um, reports for each meeting. It's very eye-opening for me. 
you know, to be in a room with full of diplomats, full of ambassadors from, you know, these 10 countries. Uh, it helped me uh, to learn a lot of like new things, things that I have I have n never known before, you know, being in these internships, it uh, helped me to uh, recognize my path, the, possibly, the possible path I can take after my graduation. So I would suggest you, if you have the opportunity, if you have the resources, uh, to not only do the credited internship during your third uh, year, but I would also suggest you to do your uh, summer internship if you can. Uh, find any any companies, you know, doesn't matter if it's a small company, it's a big company, just go for it during a summer break. Uh, and you know, when when you go and work there, you will know, uh, you can understand how the uh, industry works, how people behave and all. You can learn so, so much. So please do not get yourself stuck between class and the room. Go explore the thing. There's a lot of things you can do. There's a lot of opportunity you can, you can explore. Make use of the internet. Find the opportunity around you. You that you might uh, be interested in. So this is the time. You're still young. Uh, this is time you can make mistakes and all. Uh, make them and uh, learn from it and develop yourself from your mistakes you have done. So uh, I would say be nice to your academic advisor. Be nice to your seniors and your peers. You might uh, need them a lot throughout this like four years. Uh, journey, I would say. So, uh, all the best and may the force be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Alright, thank you for the video presentation. We hope the sharing session by our alumni will enlighten and lift up your spirit in studies to be a great political scientist. Moving on to our next agenda, I would like to invite Dr. Hasinda Jamayuddin, our Academic Advisor 1, to conduct a briefing on academic matters. And we will have a short Q&A session after the briefing. Please welcome. Dr. Linda, you are muted. Thank you, Dr. Lee. <laughs> Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, my respected colleagues and HOD, Dr. Rabia Aminuddin, uh, Dr. Lee Pemey, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, uh, and uh, to COSA's uh, committee's members, a uh, special thanks goes to the presidents, yeah, Sister Iman Kistina, for organizing this uh, with your committee members, and uh, Sister Khalida, yeah. They have been kind enough to assist me throughout uh, course manual uh, manual course registration period. Thank you so much, and brothers and sisters, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, a very warm welcome to all new students. Okay, happy to see all of you here. Um, and welcome to the university, to the Garden of Knowledge and Virtue, and welcome to the departments of political science. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Norhaslinda Binti Jamayuddin, and of course, I am here today as an academic advisor. Okay, so what is my role here? Okay, so my role here is to give you advice on academic matters. Yeah, on academic matters. Okay, um, and um, um, today's for today's uh, session, inshallah, I will share with you uh, a few important rules, the academic regulation, and also I will uh, briefly explain to you uh, the new structure for two zero one and two zero two study plans. Yeah, for new students because uh, we have a new structure uh, for you, yeah? For 201 and 202 students. Okay, now, um, um, first, um, there are a few important academic regulations that you need to know, okay? So, uh, next. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, so this, um, uh, what we call this, uh, this is very important for you to know. Yeah, uh, uh, for uh, inshallah, I will explain to you about the cost registrations, about the uh, academic expectation, about study leave matter. So please pay attention. Yeah, and if you have questions after this, we can take up later. Yeah, so we have two NA sessions after this. Okay, so these are few uh, important uh, academic regulation. Uh, the first one is course registration. Okay, so course registrations here, um, we uh, so begins it begins from pre registration. This is the first phase of course registration. Yeah, pre right or pre registration and pre -regist uh, registration periods begins on week 11 and week 12 of every regular semesters. And this continues until the first week of new semesters. Yeah, continue. So pre-registration period from week 11 and week 12 of every regular semester and the process continue. You can, you can add courses until the first week of a new semesters, of upcoming semesters. So um, when you do course registrations, yeah, this is very important. If you register, then your status is active. Okay, so if you fail to register courses, then your status is inactive. And what will happen to you if you fail to register for any course by the fourth week of new regular semesters without valid reasons, then you will be terminated. Yeah, so this uh, is the implications. Okay, now when it comes to course registrations, we have minimum and maximum academic load. Okay, so uh, please keep in mind, the minimum academic load permitted is 15 credit hours. So you need to secure at least 15 credit hours. Okay, it cannot be less than 15. That is the minimum. Okay, and uh, the maximum academic load that you can register per semester is 21 or 22 credit hours. Yeah, so... But that depends on what? That depends on your CGPA, your academic performance matters here. Let's say if your pointer, your CGPA is less than three, yeah, uh, maybe 2.6 or 2.7. The maximum uh, academic load that is permitted for you is only 15 to 18.5 credit hours. Okay, but if your CGPA is three pointer and above 3.1, 3.2, then you can take up to 21 credit hours. Yeah, so all 22 credit hours. So you can take more if you perform better. Okay, so this is very important rules and you need to know this. Yeah, uh, so that is for course registration. So it begins, okay, from pre regs yeah, pre-registration. Okay, and then the process continue until the first week of the semesters and the minimum is 15 credit hours and the maximums can be 21 or 22. That's depending on what? Your CGPA. Okay, next. Okay, uh, academic activities. Academic activities here, I'm referring to add and drop session. Yeah, add and drop sessions. So, uh, first week of the semesters, yeah, so from 1st March, you can add, you can drop. As I said, the pre-registrations, yeah, period continue until the first week of uh, a, a, a new regular semester. So you can still add, but you can add if the courses are still open, sections are still open and available. Okay, so, but if the sections are already closed, then you have to send your applications to, now for this semesters, okay, uh, the Kulia wants you to submit your applications to uh, Academy Affairs Department. Okay, please take note, yeah. Uh, the one that in charge for academic matters is uh, Deputy Deans of Academic uh, and Industrial Linkages. Academic Affairs Department. So you need to submit your applications. If you want to apply for courses with closed sessions, then you have to go or you can send your applications to Academy Affairs Department. Okay, or, or you can uh, submit to Madam Rafida, yeah, our senior administrative officer. Yeah, so and you can drop also on your own. 
Yeah. So on, on, on the first week of every regular semesters, students are allowed to add and drop on your own. Yeah. So, but if you wish to drop, uh, what are the rules that you need to know? If you wish to drop, you need to ensure that the net workload or the remaining period hours must be 15. Okay, so let's say if you have only 15, when you check your confirmation slip for now, you have 15 credit hours, okay? So you want to drop one post, okay? So the system does not allow you to drop because you have only 15. If you drop, then the remaining credit hours is what? Less than 15. So if you wish to drop, okay, uh, you need to have at least 18 credit hours. So if you have 18 credit hours, you can drop one and the remaining is 15 credit hours. Okay, so uh, week one, you can drop on your own, uh, but starting from week two until week four, uh, you need to submit your application, yeah, drop form to Academy Affairs Department if you want to drop the course, yeah. And um, if you want to withdraw courses, okay, so from week five to 10, let, let, let's say later, okay, um, due to some, uh, you know, um, reasons yeah unforeseen circumstances okay or you have any difficulties that you face later and you have decided not to continue taking one course yeah okay let's say you you have decided to drop uh let's say my course yeah, psi uh 3034 so of course you cannot take the 3034 you are first year student this is just an example Okay, so you if you uh, if you want to drop or withdraw course, okay, and on week five onwards until week ten, you have to pay three hundred. Okay, so this is this is you need to know the rules, yeah. So you have to pay three hundred just for withdrawal, yeah. But if you want to drop on week eleven, okay, towards the end of the semesters, okay, uh, you want to drop on week eleven and twelve onwards then you have to pay up to 500. Okay, so please, you have to plan carefully what you want to add, what you want to drop, yeah? You can just shop around, look at the course schedules, what are the courses that we offer, not only from our department, but from other departments as well, because later I will, I will explain the structure of your study, study plan, okay? So uh, this is very important rules, yeah? So please look, okay, for first year students, 202 students, I don't know whether you can add on your own or you have to, um, what we call this, submit your applications to Academy Affairs, but uh, please add uh, 1010, yeah? Introductions to Political Science, Section 7. Okay, Section 7 is open for you, 202 students, yeah? So please register PSCI 1010, okay, and also PSCI 2020. Okay, but later if your total, your net workload or your academic load is less than 15, then we will add, uh, maybe we will, the departments will give you 3150, uh, Modern History of Europe, yeah. Okay, so next, academic expectation. Okay, this is interesting. Now, uh, passing grade, what is the passing grade? C, uh, C if you get 50%. Out of 100, lah, yeah. So, C if you get 50, if you get 55, you get C plus, if you get 60, B minus, uh, 65, B, 70, B plus, 75, A minus, and 80, 81, and above is A, solid A. Of course, the passing grade is C, but I want you to aim for the best, okay? You are political scientist, okay? So, what happened if you get C? Let's say you are taking PSCI 1010 this semester, yeah? Introduction to Political Science. Uh, this is the basic introductory course. So you get C and you are not happy with your grade because you are majoring in Political Science. You should, you should get at least B plus or A minus or A for introductions to Political Science. So can you repeat? Yes, okay? If you want to repeat a past Course. You pass, we see, but you want to repeat PSCI 1010. Just an example here. So what you need to do, you have to fill in UG08 form. Okay, because you want to apply for what? Repeat a past course. 
but you have to pay 500 for this. Yeah, if you want to be paid a pass cost, you need to fill up the form, uh, get approval from our HOD, and then you have to pay 500. Okay, uh, these are the rules. Okay, and, and, and of course, okay, uh, how many times you can apply for uh, 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 this? Only two. Yeah, maximum two times. Yeah, okay, so that is for passing grade and if you want to repeat a pass course. Okay, now next, appeal on academic matters. Okay, appeal on academic matters. Let's say if you have some issues. Yeah, um, uh, here I'm referring to receipt exam, final exam, yeah, or a special exam. Okay, now we have all our courses. Okay, you have final exam, yeah. Mm, so here, final uh, receipt, receipt, uh, final exam is only open for graduating students. Let's say you are in your final year, final semesters, yeah, in your graduating year, then you fail one course. Okay, and this upcoming semester is your final semester. So what will happen? You can apply for receipt. Receipt means it carries 100%. Okay, 100% altogether. Receipt exam. And that's only for graduating students. Okay, and I forgot to mention this, yeah. A special rule for graduating students, yeah. Uh, for course registration just now, I mentioned that the minimum academic load permitted is 15 credit hours. But for graduating students, yeah, if this is your final semester, then you can have less than 15. Uh, you can have less than 15 credit hours. Now, a uh, special exam. Okay, special exam is for you. Uh, let's say, okay, we used to have physical exam in the past, right? Uh, before we go for online teaching and learning. So what happened is that if you miss your final exams, yeah? And if you miss your final exam because of, uh, you know, you have valid reasons for it, yeah? Due to some circumstances, okay, unavoidable circumstances, then you can apply for special exam. Okay, so special exams here uh, carry 40% only. Yeah, I'm referring to final exam. Yeah, final exam. So uh, special exam for those who miss your final exam, you can apply for special exam. Okay, now uh, in the past, okay, um, um, the uh, no, okay, we are not going to approve your application for special examinations if you miss your final exam due to Number one, for example, overslept. Oh, you say that, oh, I forgot that I have exam today. It happened many times, yeah? You forgot that you have exam today or you miss your exam, okay? Uh, your exam start at nine, and then uh, you just uh, overslept and then you say that you miss your exam because of uh, your overslept. So this is not acceptable, okay? This is something that you can control this, yeah? You can control this. So if you miss your final exam because of your, uh, what we call this, um, what we call it because of overslap, uh, because of your personal reasons, of course. And uh, let's say if you're getting married, we had one, of course, uh, why I said getting married. Uh, we had one case, students, okay, uh, the, he set the date during final examination period. Okay, so, I, I, I don't know why, because you know that uh, when you look at your academic calendar, you know that we have 14 weeks all together. And you know that towards the end, we have uh, final examinations, two weeks for final examination sessions, yeah, period. So you should not set, uh, let's say if you want to perform Umrah, you are getting married, please, this is within your control. Okay, you need to avoid this, yeah? Uh, if, we, uh, if we have physical examination after this, you need to know these are the rules and regulations that you have to comply with, yeah? So uh, no special exam will be given, okay? If you miss your exams without any valid reasons, yeah? Um, but, okay, we will give you uh, a permissions to apply for special examination, yeah? You are eligible for special examination if you uh, have uh, some issue, yeah? Such as um, uh, medical reasons. If you have medical reason, for example, you're not feeling well, yeah? Uh, and, and of course, for these, you need to get uh, MC 
from our IUM clinic, from our IUM health centers. Okay, uh, we only accept MC from our IUM health center for special examination application. Yeah, if it is for medical reasons, or maybe because you trapped, yeah, in natural disaster, for example. So this is something beyond your control. So uh, then you are eligible and you can apply for special examinations. Okay, now, because uh, we go for online teaching and learning, uh, we receive a number of applications, yeah, for special examinations, because students uh, encountered or face some issues such as poor internet connection, okay, uh, and, uh, and, um, um, and, and we uh, actually, we give permissions for the students uh, if they uh, face any difficulties uh, during final examination, if it is valid reasons, then you can apply for special exam. Yeah. Okay, next. Academic standing. Okay, so good academic standing. Uh, not two point two, of course, but this is the minimum requirement for you to continue your study in the IUM. Yeah, so two is very minimum lah. Uh, but but of course you should aim for the best three point five and above. Then if you obtain three point five, then you can apply for dean list. You get dean list provided that you register fifteen. You have fifteen credit hours. Okay, for that particular semester. Let's say this semester, okay, uh, you managed to register up to 14.5 and the Kulia has decided to, uh, to allow students uh, because of uh, some reasons you are allowed to register up to 14 or 14.5. Okay, now then your CGPA is 3.6. Okay, you cannot apply for the list not eligible for the list. Okay, so make sure you secure 15 credit hours. So if you get 3.6 and above, then you can, uh, you are eligible for the list, yeah? And the minimum is two. If below two, okay, uh, if, if your pointer is 1.68 to two pointer, then you are under probations. Okay, it's very dangerous, yeah? Uh, so please uh, try your best. Yeah, improve uh, your CGPA uh, and uh, and if what happened if you get less than one point six seven, so you will be dismissed. Yeah, and 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 uh, this is a dismissal because of poor academic performance. Uh, and of course, if you uh, uh, your CGPA is below one point six seven, automatically yeah you will be dismissed from the university. Now what happened? If this happened to you, lah, yeah, okay, um, you can appeal for readmission. Yeah, you can appeal for readmission. Yeah, readmission meaning that you're still using the same metric number. Okay, and of course, you have to pay for the processing fee. Yeah, so you have to go to, okay, just now when I mentioned about a special exam, receipt exam, course registration, you have to go to Academy of Fair Department. Now, for uh, readmission process, you have to go to Student Affairs Department. Yeah, Student Affairs Department. Please take note, yeah. Now, you can appeal for readmission. Okay, of course, uh, you have to submit your application for readmission. Okay, and they will process your applications and then they will call you for interview. We will have the readmission interview. Okay, all academy advisors will be there, including uh, the deputy dean of, Acad uh, of student affairs. Yeah, okay, so this is very important. So please maintain good CGPA. Yeah, please maintain good CGPA. Next. Application for leave of absence. This is very popular among students because, because of uh, not because of the pandemic, yeah, uh, because of uh, uh, poor internet connections, and uh, because of others, uh, you face some difficulties uh, to continue with online classes. Then uh, many of you opt for uh, leave, uh, study leave. Yeah, so a leave of absence is granted to students upon application, of course, and the maximums uh, application is only. 
for two regular semesters. Okay, you can you are allowed to apply for leave of absence. Okay, only for maximum semesters only for two semesters. And here you have to submit the application to me. You need to get you need to get obtained my recommendation. Once I recommend it, then I will pass your application to student affairs departments. Okay, so. Uh, a student who intends to apply for the leave of absence is required to submit the application with relevant supporting documents. So let's say if you have some uh, issue, uh, mental illness, for example, or any medical reasons, for example, or financial reasons, you need to uh, provide supporting document. Yeah, especially for medical reasons. Yeah, uh, and here uh, for uh, for the past two semesters, uh, and many actually uh, choose to uh, to go for they, they apply for leave of absence because of financial reasons. Okay, we approve the applications. Yeah, and also because of the uh, they cannot follow online learning. Yeah, it, it is difficult for them to follow online teaching and learning. Okay, so we approve their application for this. Yeah, so leave of absence, make sure you check in the form and you have to send it to me for recommendation. Then I will pass the form to a student affairs department for approval. Yeah, uh, so uh, next, then. Okay, that's for uh, academic regulations. Okay, next uh, is your study plan. Okay, so this one for this uh, part, I will explain the structure or the main component of study plan for 201 onwards. I mean, of, of course, it's for you as well, yeah, 202 student. Yeah, so this is a, a study plan for uh, those who are majoring in political science. Yeah, Bachelor of Human Sciences political science, that is your major. So uh, study plans here consist of four main components. Uh, the first component we have is a university required courses. So 20 credit hours for university required courses. And after this, we're going to look at uh, the list of courses that you have to take under university required courses. And then uh, Kulia required courses, six credit hours. Core courses, 72 credit hours. And last but not least, open elective courses, 30 credit hours. So total is one to eight credits. So after you have completed one to eight, then, okay, uh, you will graduate and you have completed the, the course, the program. Okay, next. Now, the first one is um, uh, what we call this, the university required courses. Okay, so university required courses total is 20 credits. Okay, and here we have number one. Uh, if you look at the first two row, uh, it's UNGS uh, subject, yeah, UNGS 1301. Okay, we have also one UNGS 1201. So it's totally different from your senior. Okay, different course code, different course title. Okay, so you have to be careful when you seek advice from your senior because you have different a component, yeah, a course that you need to register for university required course, yeah. So there are two uh, UNGS courses, uh, basic philosophy and Islamic worldview, as well as sustainable development. And you need to learn about this, okay, because this is one of the university's main agenda, yeah, for our, uh, 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 what we call the sustainable development goals. So you need to learn uh, what are the important trusts and elements under SDG. Okay, and then uh, LMVD, of course, different for school compared to your senior, uh, you have to take, this is for uh, international student, yeah? Bahasa Melayu 1 and Bahasa Melayu 2. And of course, for local student, you have to take LML, uh, I don't remember, 1301. Yeah, Bahasa Melayu for local students, yeah? So, uh, Bahasa Melayu, and then CCUB, Okay, uh, these are uh, USRA courses, uh, uh, skill courses, we call it, leadership and family management. Okay, for uh, these uh, credited core curriculum courses, you can refer to Center for Credited Leadership and Virtue, CLAV, C-L-A-V. If you have any questions uh, regarding uh, USRA or uh, skill courses that you have to take according to your level of study, then you can refer to CLAV. 
Oh, okay. Uh, and then you have to take also um, English for academic writing. Uh, they changed now the course code to LEED1301. Yeah. Uh, and it carries three credit hours. Okay. And then we have also uh, Tilawa Al Quran and Tilawa Al Quran 1 and 2. Okay. And then Arabic, only two levels for new students, okay, uh, level one and level two, okay, and the credit hours is very low. Last time, I think it's uh, for your seniors, those who follow one-to-one -one study plan, there are five level altogether and level four and level five carry three credit hours. So you are lucky, okay, they have uh, 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 they have made some changes yeah, for this, uh, for, uh, for Arabic courses. Okay, it's only at one, zero, one, zero 0.5 credit hours and only two levels, yeah? And then you have UNGS 2380, UNGS 2290. So all together for UNGS courses, you have to take four, four UNGS courses. Okay, you are no longer required to take MPU subject. Okay, what is MPU subject? Mata Pelajaran Umum. Okay, for, for, for local students, so you don't have to. So now you are required to take all four UNGS courses. Okay, and you can take a look at the study plan. And this study plan is available on KIRKHS website. Yeah, for 2020, 201 onwards. Yeah, this one, the latest structure is available on KIRKHS website. Okay, so uh, these are university required courses, meaning that compulsory lah. Okay, so you have to take accordingly. Like you have to plan carefully when you want to take the NTS, Arabic, Tilawa, Bahasa, and English. Okay, next. Okay, uh, now um, before I uh, explain the Kuliah required courses, uh, for university required courses, uh, UNGS courses belongs to FIT department, interdisciplinary department. Okay, so if you have any issue, okay, if you cannot register, or if you want to add this course, you can refer to FIT department, interdisciplinary department. Okay, so this UNGS courses belongs to FIT department. Uh, Bahasa Melayu uh, for local and international students, Tilawa, Al-Quran, these courses belong to CELPEC. If you have any issue, then you can refer to CELPEC. Koku subject, co curriculum, okay, skill courses they are offered by CLAF. You can refer to CLAF. Okay. Now, Kulia required courses. Okay, so these courses, of course, belong to Kulia. You can always refer to our Kulia. Now, Kulia required courses carry six credits hours. We have a PSCI 494, final year project one, okay, three credit hours, and PSCI 496, or we call it FYP2, carry three credit hours. So for you to register, yeah, FYP1, you have to fulfill all prerequisite subject. Yeah, uh, PSCI 1010, okay, uh, 2210, comparative politics, 2523, public administration, 2750, international relation, and 2999, research methodology. So after you have completed this course, you can uh, register PSCI 4994. So what is the process here? Now, uh, 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 you have to uh, send the application to the course coordinator. Now for now, the course coordinator for FYP is Dr. Avdi. Okay, Dr. Avdi, okay, she in charge for FYP program. Now, when we receive your application, we process your applications and then we look at your area of interest because you have to write or develop a research proposal. Yeah, what is the nature of the course? You need to do research work. Okay, independent research work. Okay, you need to develop a research proposal for FYP1. And for that, the department will assign supervisors for you. Okay, so you need to plan your study carefully. When to register? Now, if you plan to complete your study within four years, so uh, you can register FYP1 in your final year, okay, level uh, year four, semester one because we offer FYP1 every semester one only, right? So it's very easy for you to plan when to take, if you want to complete your study in three, uh, in four years, yeah? In your final year, first semesters, then you register. 
Okay. Uh, but if you want to complete your study within three and a half years, then you have to check when is your final year or graduating semester. Okay. So uh, let's say uh, for your batch 202. Yeah, for 202, I think Dr. Rana shared this a slide with uh, Bosa, yeah? I think you can uh, refer, chat with Bosa after this. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, for 202, if you plan to complete your study within three and a half years, meaning that semester, uh, semester one, uh, 2023, 2024 will be your grad graduating semester. Okay, semester one, 2023-2024 will be your graduating semester. Okay, so if semester one, 2023-2024 is your graduating semester, you must take uh, FYP1 in your third year first semester, which is uh, semester one, 2022-2023. Okay, so you need to plan. And don't worry about this, yeah? It's a bit confusing, I know. But inshallah, the department will be organizing. We have another session for FYP and internship. Yeah? So for FYP, this is where you need to develop a research proposal for FYP1. Okay, it's an independent research work. Okay, and you will be supervised by my colleagues, members of the departments, yeah? Uh, so we will assign one supervisors based on your area of interest. Let's see if you want to write something on public policies, uh, then you uh, will be uh, your supervisors. If you want to write uh, on international political economy, maybe the department will assign Dr. Lee Pei Ming, yeah? So, so that's depending on what your area of interest. Now, after you pass FYP1, then in the following semesters, you can register for FYP2, 496, yeah, 496. And here, it's a, it's a continuation of FYP1, of course, in which uh, after you have developed your proposals in FYP1, okay, then you have defended your proposals and you already passed, then you need to continue with data collection and data analysis, yeah? Now, it is not easy. Okay, this will not be easy for you. It's not straightforward task because you have to write a paper, because you have to do data collection, you have to do data analysis on your own. And on top of that, you are taking other courses as well. Okay, so my advice is if you register for FYP1, make sure you have at least 15 to 18 credit hours only. So it is manageable. Okay, not to overburden yourself. Okay, uh, we have cases this semester, student fail FYP1. <laughs> First time ever, student fail FYP1. And the reasons why he failed, I had this uh, consultation with him yesterday uh, because of uh, he lost all the data and because of poor internet connections as well. I don't know why poor internet connections is one of the reasons. Yeah, maybe because it's difficult for him to get all the uh, online sources, secondary data, uh, I presume. So here, uh, you have to be careful, yeah? So you have to be careful. Now, if you fail, FYP1, what happened, that will affect your graduation. Most probably you have to extend your years of study here. Okay, you have to extend another semesters for you to complete. FYP because if you fail FYP one, then in the next semester, in the following semester, you need to retake the same course again. FYP one, okay. Then after class, then after you fail or completed this course, then only you continue with FYP, FYP two. Yeah, this is very important. Okay, uh, so of course the compulsory courses as well for for you. Yeah, you cannot run away from this. I don't want to take uh, uh, uh I don't want to take FYP because it's very difficult, it's very challenging, it's very difficult to write the research proposals. Yeah, no, you cannot run away from this because this is compulsory subject. Okay, next we have um, core courses. Okay, core courses, we have uh, 72 credit hours under this section. Um, of course, six uh, credit hours for internship. And our course coordinator for internship is Dr. Rohana Abdul Hamid. 
Yeah. So Dr. Rohana is our course coordinator for internship. And for your information, the department offers internship every short semester, only in a short semester. Now, if you ask me, I don't bother to ask whether we can take it during regular semesters or not. No, the answer is no. Yeah, only during short semesters. And just like FYP, you need to plan properly when you want to graduate. Okay, are you going to complete your study within three and a half years or four years? Because that would affect your internship periods. You need to plan carefully. Yeah, uh, for internship, you have to get placement on your own. Yeah, and then we, you will have two supervisors. Okay, work with supervisor as well as university supervisors. Uh, here we will contact your supervisors and get to know your progress, your job performance, and then we will do evaluations. Yeah. Um, there are two phases, yeah, first evaluation and second evaluations. Okay. Uh, next we have uh, two IRK introductory courses. Yeah, you need to take two IRK. Yeah, yeah. Next, you never go to yeah, next slide. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, okay. So now, uh, before I go to no, 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 no. Next, uh, previous slide, please. Okay. Now, if you want to register for internship, again, the department set prerequisite subject for internship program. Yeah, make sure you have completed 10, 10, 2210, 2523, 2750, and 2999. Then only you can apply for yeah, so these are the prerequisite courses set by the department. Yeah, and after that, you have to also register two IRK introductory courses. And there are 10 courses. Yeah, if you look at the list, there are 10 courses altogether. You just choose on, you need to choose only two courses. So these courses offered uh, from uh, Arabic department, from Fiqh department, from Quran and Sunnah department, yeah, where you can choose, yeah, uh, up to two IRK courses only. Okay, total is total six credit hours for IRK introductory courses. Okay, let's say for this semester you register two uh, department courses: Introduction to Political Science and also uh, uh, Malaysian Government and Politics (PSI 2020). Then what else you can take the NGS subject? Okay, maybe two UNGS subject, and what else you can take one IRK introductory courses. So total you have uh, 15 or you can have more if you want to. Okay, you can take two uh, IRK courses this semester. Okay, so that you secure 15 credit hours. Okay, uh, next. Um, these are the list yeah, for IRK introductory courses. You can choose on your own. Okay, next. After... Uh, Next, we have uh, department core courses. Yeah, department core courses. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, department core courses. Okay. Uh, so we have 30 credit hours for core department courses. Uh, this is your major. Now, uh, these are um, uh, core department courses and you have to take all 10. Yeah, so there are 10 courses all together. In your first year, first semesters, of course, you must register uh, PSCI 1010, Introduction to Political Science, and PSCI 2020, Malaysian Government and Politics. Okay, Malaysian Governments and Politics. Now, uh, in the following semesters, inshallah, yeah, you can, after you uh, pass these two courses, then you can uh, register uh, other PSCI introductory courses. We have uh, political philosophy, comparative politics, international relations, and public admin. Okay, so you will see Dr. Mio, if you register for political philosophy in your second semester, you, you will see uh, Dr. Rohana for comparative politics, Dr. Tunku Moha, international relations, and Dr. Rabiah, our HOD. Yeah. Uh, if you register for public administration, okay? Then after that, you can register research methodology. So we set prerequisite courses for, uh, for you to take research methodology. You need to complete all PSCI introductory courses, then only you can uh, register for PSCI 2999 research methodology. For now, it is offered under Dr. Shaza Farhana. Yeah, so 
uh, Dr. Shaza Fahana. Uh, she is the uh, course instructor for research methodology. And this is very important yeah, course for you because you will learn how to write a good research proposal, all the skills and techniques that you need to know for developing a good research proposal. You will learn from this course. So please, uh, yeah, uh, 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 you have to uh, make sure that you register this course after completing all other PSCI introductory courses. Next, okay, 3150, modern, no, no, not next. Seems like, okay, uh, modern history of Europe. Uh, this one is uh, previously, um, the, co the course code is 2520. Okay, the, the course code, uh, we, we changed the course code. Okay, but um, I think uh, for now, uh, if you are uh, uh, what we call this, if you have less than 15 credit hours, then you want, you need to take more from the department courses, then uh, I will advise you to add modern history of your Don't worry, okay, because uh, it's actually a, a level 2000 course. Yeah, uh, introductions as well. Yeah, uh, so it's just that we change the course code to three one five zero, and uh, three six two zero after that international political economy, and we have also three seven two zero international organization. So IPE, I think now we offered. Um, uh, I think Dr. Lee Pei Mei. Yeah, so she's the uh, the the course instructor for IPE. Okay, and sometimes the department offer under Dr. Munuri Zaman. Yeah, an international organization, of course, if you register this uh, course, uh, you can, uh, so you, you will uh, enroll in Dr. Ishtia's class. Yeah, uh, our, our senior lecturers, legends, yeah. Uh, so most of the students enjoy his class very much. Yeah, so these are 10 core department courses. Okay, uh, and of course, uh, you have to take according to your level of study. Okay, next. Then we have course specialization courses. So department for those who are majoring in political science, uh, okay, you need to complete 60, 60 uh, department courses. It, uh, it, we can divide it into two. The first one just now is for department and uh, the second part is course specialization courses. And of course, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Rabi, uh, we have four areas of specialization in political science program. You can can choose uh, whether you want to take all courses or for specialization from international relation or from public administration and public policy, from comparative politics or from political theory and philosophy. So uh, here you need to take 30 credit hours, which is equivalent to 10 courses. Yeah. So we offer there are four specialization altogether. There are 10 courses under international relation. Now look at, this is the international relations. Yeah, this is what are the courses that we offer under IR. Uh, for example, international quality and the Muslim world, theories of IR, foreign policy decision-making, Asian foreign policy, international law and diplomacy, peace and conflict study, US foreign policy, very popular subject, foreign policy of Russian Federation, study of international terrorism yeah and political economy of BRICS, yeah so there are 10 courses all together under international relation next and we have another 10 courses offered under public administration and public policy study yeah we have islamic principle and practices of public administration public personnel approaches to public policy analysis public sector governance in Malaysia, comparative public policy, science and technology policy, IGR, intergovernmental policy relation, issues in public policy implementation, uh, organizational management and government finance. Next. Okay, then we have another 10 courses offered for specializations that comes under comparative politics. Yeah, we have ethnic quality, comparative quality of the Muslim world, political and governmental system in Southeast Asia, government and politics in South Asia, East Asian politics, cyber politics, studies in Muslim minority, 
European politics and political and governmental system in the Middle East. Uh, this is also popular. Okay, this course, uh, I think Dr. Shaza uh, is the course, called, uh, course instructor for 4252. Okay, we receive a lot, yeah, a number of students want to apply for this every semester when we offer this uh, elective course. And last but not least, we have another 10 courses offered under political theory and political philosophy. Okay, so we have Malaysian political ideas and experience, politics of populism, Western intellectual history, media and politics, uh, contemporary Islamic political thought, political ideology, sorry for the error, yes, spelling error, political themes, theories of political development, ethics and politics, and gender and politics. Now, so we offer 10 courses for, for all four areas of specialization. Yeah, now, because you need to take only 10. Yeah, only 30 credit hours, which is equivalent to 10 courses. So what you can do is that you can take all 10 from one area if you want to. But please keep in mind that these are elective, core elective courses. So uh, uh, if we offer, for example, yeah, media and politics this semester, yeah, it is not offered. Okay, The same courses is uh, not necessarily be offered in the following semester because we offer elective courses in every alternate semester okay we offer elective courses in alternate semester so if we offer these semesters we will not offer the same course again next semesters yeah so it may not necessarily be offered again in the uh, so let's say we, for this semester we have media and politics so uh, uh next semesters okay we're not going to offer media and politics we have to wait until uh, semester two again then you will see the same course yeah media and politics so sometimes for elective courses we offer in alternate semester not every semester okay uh not for core department for department just now the introduction to political science government and quality public admin international relation ipe international organization we offer every semester because that is uh these are core department courses but for specialization is different yeah uh, uh, we offer in alternate semester most of the time yeah so what you need to do for core specialization courses you have to choose 10 okay you can take all 10 from one area okay but you can also mix and match okay keep an open mind and you can look at what seems interesting for you Okay, what seems interesting for you, let's say you want to take more, you want to, let's say, of course, you, you want to take more courses from IR, but then you, when you look at the course offering, uh, the, the departments offer media and policy, which is, this is not under IR, this is, this come under political uh, theory and philosophy, but you want to know the, 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 the important role played by media and politics, you want to take up to each class, class, then you should Mix and match, no problem. Yeah, so that's for core specialization. Okay, next. Then uh, the last component, okay, is open elective course. These sections allow students to register courses offered by other department, not from political science, from other department, let's say uh, hierarchy HS, we have 11 departments all together. You can take courses offered by sociology, from Quran and Sunnah, from communications department if you want to, or you can take courses offered by other colleagues, yeah? for example, from KICT, from uh, ICOM, Kuli of Law, or from economics if you want to. Okay, so uh, uh, it's quite flexible. Okay, then when you look at your study plan after this one, the Kulia assigned the study plan for you. You can look at your study plan, you can see long list of courses under open elective section. Okay, where you can take all these courses, but make sure you take, okay, uh, uh, what we call these courses according to your level of study. Now, this, there are 10 courses, of course, 30 credit hours equivalent to 10 courses altogether for open elective courses. Now, if you, uh, can you do minoring? Yes. Now, this is very special, yeah? Uh, this is, um, what's interesting here is that you can uh, do minoring uh, in one of the area if you take uh, seven courses offered by a single department. Let's say if you take seven courses offered by communication department, then you can do minoring in communication. Okay. Or you take seven courses from sociology, 
then uh, you can uh, you uh, you, uh, you, uh, you do minoring in uh, sociology. Okay, so seven courses. It takes seven courses if you want to do minor. Yeah, uh, and of course, minoring will not appear on your school, but it will appear on your academic transcript. Your minoring subject, your minoring areas, major in political science, minoring in communication, or major in political science, minoring in economics, or minoring in law. But okay, keep in mind, please take note. Uh, some of the students, okay, I think uh, your seniors, yeah, uh, they like to combine politics and economics and politics and law, which seems interesting as well, yeah. Uh, but uh, here, if you want to do minoring in uh, economics, then uh, instead of uh, taking uh, seven, you have to, because they set prerequisite subject. So you will end up taking more than 30 hours. I think for economic 36 period hours, because of uh, a few prerequisite subjects set by a Kulia of economy. Same goes for uh, ICOM, okay, because they set prerequisite subject. Therefore, if you want to do minor, you have to take all 10 plus, uh, I think more than 10 courses from ICOM if you want to do minor in uh, Kulia of law. Yeah, so uh, you need to know what are the rules and regulations. You can refer to the respective Kulia if you are interested to the minoring in your respective discipline. Okay, so this is uh, this is for open elective section. Yeah, open elective session, or you can miss and match as well. Okay, so next is for those who want to okay uh, do minoring. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think this one is not for you because you are majoring in political science. But yeah, it's for uh, for uh, for other students uh, who are majoring, let's say, in communication or in sociology, yeah, or in history if they want to do minor in uh, political science. But um, we have actually received uh, what we call this a few application from our student, yeah, those who, uh, when they, uh, 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 um, what we call this upon admissions, okay, um, uh, what we call this, uh, when you declare your majors, uh, the Kulia uh, gave you, uh, I think, I don't know whether you can choose your major or not, because some, some students, international students, is already stated in your offer letter, whether you are majoring in political science or other discipline, yeah? So some of you, you are not interested. You don't want to continue your uh, programs in political science, okay? Uh, but you want to keep it as a minor subject, okay? Then you can apply for change of program, okay? So whatever courses that you have taken, so change of program, it, can, it should be done, okay? Uh, 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 within your first years of study, yeah, and of course, make sure your credit hours, yeah, do not exceed 40, yeah, make sure it's less than 40 credit hours, then in your first semester, first year, you need to know whether you want to change or not, yeah, if you want to change, let's say this semester, you have to take introduction to political science and Malaysian government and politics, even though you have decided to change your program, maybe to communications after this, you need to take intro to political science and Malaysian government and politics, and make sure you take introductions to communications as well, because you plan to change your major to comm, let's say, or introductions to history, because you plan to change your major to history, let's say, yeah, so uh, what happens is that uh, if your application is successful after this, yeah, for change of program, then these two courses appears in your open elective section. And it, therefore, if you want to continue uh, with political science as your minoring, then you can take the following courses. I think I think that is all for me. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay, uh, over to you, uh, Brother Najwan. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Noslinda, for the academic briefing. We hope that the briefing could be first in regards to the academic methods. Now, I would like to uh, Dr. Linda, can, do you accept any question? Yeah, 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 right. yeah, we'll continue. Okay. okay, right. So we will open the floor for the Q&A session. If you have any question in regards to academic methods, you may open the mic and shoot your question, or you can also type your question in the chat box. Yes, please ask questions, especially those who want to change program, if you want to know what are the procedure. I'm not encouraging you to Session program. I want you to stay with political science, okay? But in case, if you want to know what are the procedure, or maybe you want to know about the specializations. 
Anyone? Or maybe senior, if you want to know more about your study plan. Okay, so here, uh, New intakes. Okay, uh, Dr. Hassan, can you explain? Uh, so uh, here, question from uh, Ifa Zulaika. Can you explain about double degree? Mm. Okay, uh, double degree, uh, I think what you need to do is that, um, I think for the new structures, yeah, uh, it, it's a bit complicated for you to continue with double degree program, but is doable, is feasible. What you need to do, let's say, for example, you have completed, uh, let's say, 30 credits uh, 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 under open elective sessions, right? Under open elective sessions, uh, you already take all 10 from communication, yeah? So what you need to do is that you need to take 30 credit hours more for you to do double degree in communications, meaning that you have to, let's say, instead of four years of study, you have to extend your study period up to, uh, let's say, uh, four years equals to each semester. Maybe uh, you need to have extra two semesters for you to do double degree programs. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. So, so because of the department's uh, uh, core subject, yeah, the total credit hours for department for, uh, core subject is 60. For department political science, 60 seems good for communication, sociology, or history. 60 credit hours for department courses. Yeah. So if you have completed 30 credit hours under open elective sessions, therefore, uh, you need to take 30 credit hours more for you to, uh, if you want to do a double DB program. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you, Dr. Sinda. Another question from Hima. Hello, Dr. Sinda. Can we know the procedure to change the course? To change the course or to change the program, Hima? Uh, to change the course, of course, you have to deal with me. And, uh, and also, you can also refer to Madam Rafida from Academy of Fair Department. But I'm sure your question is about change of program, correct, Hima? Okay, so while waiting for him, uh, yes, okay, change of program. So you are majoring in political science, yeah, and uh, you want to change your programs. So what you need to do, you have make sure your total credit hours, okay, should not exceed 40, meaning that you need to apply, okay, uh, for change of program when you are in your first year first semester or second semester, okay? Now, uh, so first uh, we have, uh, you need to download the form for change of program, yeah? And then uh, you have to get the approval from uh, HOD. So this is the procedure for change of program within Kuliah. I'm not saying, I'm, it's not for inter Kuliah, yeah? Inter Kuliah is, is a bit difficult because we have to go through Ahmad. Yeah, within Kuliah is a bit simple. Uh, so let's say from political science to history. Okay, so for political science to history, what you need to do, this is your first semesters. And of course, you cannot change. Uh, you cannot change from political science to history in your first year, first semesters. So what you need to do, okay, uh, you need to register the SCI subject, okay, uh, introduction to political science, uh, government, government and politics, and make sure you register introduction to history. Okay, because change of program, every department, they will look at this subject, your, 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 what we call your grade. Okay, so there is a, a minimum requirement set. If you want to change to history, let's say, you need to get at least B plus for introduction to history. Okay, uh, so for example, those who want to change the program to political science, uh, so the minimum requirement set by the department is you need to get at least uh, B plus for uh, introduction to political science. The same goes for other departments. There are different requirements set. Yeah, so that one you have to check. Now, so what you need to do, okay, for this semester, you have to register PSI courses plus introduction to history and other university required courses to be on the safe side. Do not take open elective courses, okay? And, and, and just focus on university required courses because you want to change your program after this, okay? Or some of you actually, when they want to change the program, they, don't, they, 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 they just take introduction to history 
and introduction to political science and the rest they take all university required courses including i have two irk introductory courses because they want to change their program and uh so here what you need to do then after you have registered all these courses and then make sure you get a good grade especially for introductions to history then and the next step is for you to apply okay after uh end of this semester uh, this is what semester two okay uh after you get your results your final results then you can submit your application yeah you can submit your application fill in all the uh the the change of program form and the form is available in our website kirkhs website under students uh, academy affairs department yeah uh so get the form okay fill up the form and then get approval you you need to get approval first from our hod we must release you first Okay, we must agree, we must approve first, then only you can get approval from history department. Okay, now if we refuse to, if we reject your application, you cannot change your program. So you need to get approval, obtain approval from HOD, yeah, from our political science department. Then after we agree to release you, then you get approval, then you get signature from uh, history department. You have to see uh, Dr. Helmi, Dr. Helmi is a uh, HOD yeah, for, uh, for history department and you need to get and obtain his approval. Then after you get approval from both HOD, the next step is you can submit your application to DDAIL yeah, or, or direct to Madam Rafida from Academ Academic Affairs Department. So these are the important steps that you have to follow for change of program. Okay, so what if you fail to change your program in your first year, second semesters? So uh, 15 credit hours already, okay? Uh, in your first year, you have registered up to 15. Uh, in your first year, second semester, 15, already 30, you can still continue because make sure, remember the rules, do not exceed 41 credit hours, okay? If your total credit hours still below than 40, then you are eligible for, uh, for you to, you can apply for change of program, okay? All right, thank you. So the mm -hmm. next question from Fahmi Ghazali. Doctor, if I want to shorten up my study period, what should I do? And another one, he added that, uh, and I were to measuring income, what should I do? Okay, okay, uh, shorten your study period first yes yeah? shorten your study period meaning that okay uh this is uh this is very interesting because compared to your seniors you this they suffer a lot because they have to take Arabic courses up to five level you know but yours is a bit uh, simple and uh, uh I think more flexible uh you can complete your study within three years three years meaning that six semesters if you want to provided that you have good CGP yeah your academic performance is good your cgpa is good then of course if your cgpa is above 3.4 3.5 then you can take up to 22 credit hours 23 credit hours per semester yeah but of course you need to enjoy your life as well please get a life you are not i mean i'm it is uh, it's good if you can complete your study within three years, but uh, there are other things that you can do. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a university's life. Enjoy your life, get to know others, join societies. Yeah, uh, then instead of just focusing on your academic uh, matters only. Yeah, so yes, you can finish up uh, within three years, but of course, you have to take more than 20 credit hours every semester. And it can be done. Yeah, if you if your CGP is good. Now, if you want to do minoring in communication, yeah, okay. So as I said, uh, uh, you are allowed for open elective. Yeah, now focus on open elective session. So for this component, open elective, you can take courses offered by other department, and this and this can be your minor as well. Yeah, minoring. So what you need to do, make sure you take more than seven courses offered by communication department throughout your study period, make sure you take more than seven. Up to seven is already okay, but my advice is if you plan to do minory, you better take all 10 from communication if possible. Yeah, so you can learn as much as possible. Uh, so here, uh, make sure you take courses according to your level of study. So now if you have decided to do minory in communications, maybe in your first year, you can try to register introductions to communications, or maybe in the following semester, you can register introduction to communication. So minoring is easy, okay, because it just it requires you to take on uh, seven courses 
from a single department. Okay. All right. So for the next question from Sister Rafida, Doctor, I took five subjects this semester with 14.5 credit hour, but the minimum required credit hour is 15. Do I need to take another subject? Okay. I think Kulia already, I think Ahmad, this one is coming from Ahmad, yeah, because of the current situations, yeah, and uh, due to some reasons, they allow students to register up to 14.5. If you fail to secure 15 credit hours, it should be fine. You can take up to 14.5 credit hours, yeah, but just now I mentioned these rules, yeah, what happened if you get 3.6 CGPA? If your CGPA, your performance is good, you, uh, you perform well, and you get... A and A minus in all five courses that you have registered, and then your CGP is 3.6 or 3.7, but your credit hours registered, total credit hours registered is less than 15, then you are not eligible for the list. You cannot get the list for this. Yeah, so to be on the safe side, yeah, because I know you are bright, brilliant students we have, yeah, all these future portal scientists, it's better if you can register up to at least 15, 15.5 or 16 credit hours, so that if you get good CGPA, then you can uh, get Dean's, dean's list. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is from Brother Nabil Hazi. Salam Dr. Hazinda. I have submitted my COP to DDAIL and I've got signature from both departments. Now waiting for DDAIL decision. My question is, what about my prereq? I have already completed the prereq as Quran Sunnah student, but if I got to change my program to political science, how should I manage the schedule? Okay, let me read again the question from Brad. Thank you, thank you, Najwa. Uh, from Brad and Abdul Hazi, I have submitted my COP to DAIL and I have got signature from both department now waiting for the DA decision. My question is what about my prereq? I have already completed the prereq for Quran and Sunnah. Uh, but if I got changed, I can say how I should manage the schedule. Okay, this is when uh, you want to, okay, for brother Nabil Hazi, uh, you uh, want to change your program from Quran and Sunnah to political science. Okay, uh, welcome to our department. I hope they will approve your applications. Okay, uh, so what you need to do because you have taken few courses from Quran and Sunnah. So the systems, half these courses and the open elective session. We cannot remove them. It's there forever. So what you need to do, yeah, yeah. So once they approve your application for change of program, the Kulia will assign a new study plan, PSEI. Okay, PSEI study plan for you. And then you can see in your graduation audit, there are all courses that you have taken from Quran and Sunnah. Okay, the systems will pop these courses under open elective section. Let's say for now you have completed, let's say, uh, five courses from Quran and Sunnah. So later when they change your, their, your study plan, then under open elective, you have completed all uh, five courses and the open activity, which is equivalent to 15 credit hours. So the remaining you can, if you want to do minor in Quran and Sunnah, it's a good combination of political scientists with a good Islamic background, correct? So you can continue taking more courses from Quran and Sunnah so that you, you can do minor in Quran and Sunnah and majoring in political science. Okay, so if you want to know more, okay, you can refer to me. I will help you, okay, uh, what, what to take and, and how to plan your study. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, next is uh, from Sister Nabila, a second doctor. If we are not satisfied with the result of our open elective subject, can we drop the said subject and take another subject? Can you drop? Uh, okay. Meaning that, uh, okay, so if you, okay, you register an uh, elective course and then you are not satisfied with the, the grade, is it? Let me see the yeah, question. Think, yeah, the open elective subject, meaning from, from other Kulia, I guess. Yeah, so yeah. they are got two different situations. If you have completed the course, if you have completed the course, okay, you registered one elective course, you have completed the course, meaning that you already get the grade for this course, meaning that you pass, but you're not happy with your grade. Yeah, you're not happy with your grade. Yes, you can repeat a past course, okay? Two times you can apply for this. Yeah, you need to get the form from Ahmad UG084. 
okay, for you to repeat a past course and you have to pay 500 per course, per course, because you already passed, okay, but you want to improve your grade. You want to take same course again. Normally, uh, usually what uh, students always apply for, uh, they want to retake uh, the same course uh, if it is core department courses. Yeah, but mm, uh, very rare. Uh, students want to repeat the same course if it is elective. But it's okay. Okay, it is allowed. No problem. You already registered. You already got, uh, you already have complete, you, already, you have completed the course and you're not happy with your current grade. Okay, then you want to improve your grade. You can apply for uh, uh, repeat, uh, uh, you can repeat a past course and you need to fill, in the, uh, fill up the UG08 form and then you have to pay 500. And then of course, you need to get approval from the respective department, from the HOD. Okay, so these are the procedures. Okay, uh, but uh, number two situation, okay, allow me to share this, yeah. But if you are taking this course, okay, in the current semester, then uh, in the first week, uh, the lecture introduced to you about the nature of the course, the, the learning outcome, and then you continue, yeah? Uh, and, and, and until week four, and then, and then you feel that, oh, I don't like actually. Um, and this is not what I want. This is not what I want to learn from this respective course. I mean, the, from the elective course. And I want to drop. Okay, now remember the rules again for add and drop. Drop from week two to week four, you just have to submit your applications to academy affairs departments, okay? But if you make these decisions on week five onwards, withdrawal, okay? For withdrawal, you need to pay 300, okay? So you need to plan carefully, okay? Next. Also, we received many questions here, Brother Najwan. Oh, yeah. Okay, next from uh, Brother Ahmad Hani, similar to Brother Nabil Hazik. Mm -hmm. uh, he also applied for COP to political science mm -hmm. and uh, also took several courses that are similar and passed. So uh, he wants to know what is the process for transfer of credit for courses? Uh, uh, previously in which departments? It was in the department of? Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Annie. Uh, from the department of uh, Competitive religion, Usuluddin and competitive religion. I took uh, research methodology and passed, so I want to know how to transfer my credit. Okay, so uh, let me make it clear here. You are majoring in comparative religion, correct? Brother? Yes, correct. Okay, now uh, you already applied for change of program? Um, yes, only waiting for DDL approval. Okay, just waiting for the approval. Now the question is, how are you going to transfer? Is it possible for you to transfer all the credits? Is it? Yes. Okay. Okay. It's the same actually situation with Brother Nabil. Um, whatever courses that you have registered from comparative religion, uh, this will uh, comes or appears in your open elective session. And uh, now let's say you have taken a uh, research methodology uh, from comparative religion. So you want to cross list, you, you want to be exempted because in political science also we have research methodology, right? So here, okay, uh, for research methodology, the nature of the course, of course, you learned research skills, but it's a little bit different because in political science, uh, you have to learn all the statistical analysis. So we cannot uh, do, uh, we cannot allow for uh, what we call these uh, cost substitutions or allow you to cross list the subject for research methodology. Now, you, even if you have taken the same course from comparative religions. This course already offered and taken when you are majoring in comparative religion. Yeah. Other than that, whatever courses that you have taken will be part here. So the systems will put these courses under open elective. Yeah. But to cross list the subject, I don't think so it is allowed because uh, they are like, as I, as I, uh, what we put, if you look at the nature of the course, I'm sure you learned, of course, skills are quite similar when we talk about nature analysis skills, but in terms of the depth and the breadth of the uh, uh, technique that you learn. So you have to take the same course again, the one that offered by a political science department. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Thank you. Welcome. That's it for our last question from Brother Ayman Anwar. 
uh, semiconductor, may I know what are the courses offered by the kuliah or department during semester three or short semester? No courses offered during short semester except for internship. Yeah, uh, so uh, for uh, during short semesters, uh, the department offers only internship program. Okay, and this program carries six credit hours. Yeah, and this is for third and final year students, of course. And for first year and second year students, if you want to uh, register courses during short semesters, you can take a university required courses. Most of your seniors, okay, when they plan their study, okay, I would advise them you can keep some of the courses, for example, Arabic. Uh, Tilawa or Bahasa Melayu, you can take these courses during short semesters because CELPAD offer these courses during short semesters. Okay. All right. Thank you to Dr. Tinda for the academic okay. briefing and we hope Thank that the briefing to is as in the regard to academic matters. Uh, if, you have, if you guys have any inquiries, you may contact uh, Dr. Uh, Tinda for uh, any clarification. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I would like to invite Sister Aisha Farhani, Vice President 1 of Secretariat for Political Science, to present the lineup for the Secretary of Political Science 2021 senior. Please welcome. Can I have this slide? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh um, to the head of department, Dr. Rabia, Academic Advisor 1, Dr. Aslinda and Dr. Uh, Dr. Lipeme, Academic Advisor 2. As what has been mentioned by the Master of Ceremony, my name is Aisha Farhana binti Muat Pisal. I am the Vice President 1 of the Secretariat of Political Science. So first thing first, I would like to congratulate to all the new intake students for being accepted to IIUM. Hope that you have a enjoyable uh, year throughout your studies in IIUM. So now let's proceed to the line of, of the Secretariat. Next slide. So for the Bureau of Multimedia, we have uh, the head of Bureau has sister in Shirah Shahmina Binti Muhammad Jafri and the assistant head of Bureau, brother Muhammad Amar Shahmi. So basically, they are the creative minds of the behind every social media post in behind every post of our in our social media accounts. Uh, next, for the Unipolitics Bureau, the head of bureau we have Sister Nur Fazira binti Muhammad Fazara, and the assistant head of bureau we have Sister Wan Marisa binti Sharif. Uh, this bureau handles with all the posting in our website and also handles a talk show, which is a collaboration within. A society in the Department of Communication in IIUM TV named Political Insights. Next. Next is the Welfare and Sponsorship Bureau. The head of bureau we have Sister Nur Fazila Binti Jamil. And the assistant head of bureau we have Sister Shahani Binti Shafi'i. Basically, they cater the welfare of the students in the Department of Political Science. Next. And we have Education Bureau. The head of bureau is Sister Nur Idina Khalida Binti Azham. And the assistant head of bureau is Sister Dini Chairani. So basically, uh, they will answer your question rega uh, regarding academic matters. So if you have any question regarding academic matters, general one, you can just ask them. Next. Uh, we have Public Relation and Internationalization Bureau. The head of bureau is Sister Farah Nadia Binti Abdul Halim. And the assistant head of bureau is Sister Hadi. So basically, they are the one who create uh, create and preserve networks between students, other societies, and also um, other loc local and international universities. Next. So moving forward to the presidential board. So the financial controller, financial controller one, Sister Nur Fatiha bin Sabtu, and the financial controller two, brother Najwan Arif bin Muhammad Zahari. Next. The secretary one, we have Sister Nur Anis Farhana binti Raz Rahman Izha. And secretary two, we have Sister Nur Dini Nadia binti Rosdi. Next. So uh, the vice president one, me, myself, Aisha Farhana. And the vice president two, we have Sister Umi Nadira binti Ramli. Next. Uh, our president is Sister Iman Kistina binti Izudin Shah. So basically that are the line up 
of the Secretariat of Political Science tenure 2020 and tenure 2021. So if you have anything uh, related to the academic and also programs and talk show, you can just come to any of us. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, Sister Aisha, for the presentation. Uh, next, I would like to invite Sister Iman Christina, our President of Secretary of Political Science, to give the uh, speech. Please welcome. Okay, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, I would like to thank uh, our Head of Department, Dr. Rabia, uh, our Academic Advisors, our beloved Dr. Hasinda and Dr. Lee Pemey. Um, and I would like to thank you for everyone, um, especially uh, for attending this mass gathering and academic briefing, especially since it's your semester break. I know you guys were rather sleep right now, but this is very important. And as a senior, I would like to uh, highlight on how important this is actually is. So um, I know you probably would forget mostly of what you've uh, heard, but uh, you can always consult again with our academic advisors any time of the day. You have to uh, set an appointment first, email them. And then um, ask them to, you know, consult with them on how to properly plan your study plan, which I hope I, I wish I did earlier. As a senior, you guys should listen to that. Um, uh, uh, as introduced, I am the president of um, political science, uh, the secretary of political science, Iman Kistina. Um, I am currently in my third year and second semester. Um, I don't have a majoring, but most of my subjects are in um, international relations and comparative politics. Uh, if you have any questions, I think you can ask me in my batchmates and so on. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to um, promote POSA. So POSA, we are planning a lot of interesting programs throughout this year, this academic year and the next semester that we hope can contribute to your learning curve. We will make sure that um, this can contribute to building a portfolio that can um, help you in securing an internship placement or, uh, you know, uh, help you in getting a job in the future. Um, so we hope that I can see, I hope that I can see all your, you know, Google Meet or Zoom usernames uh, in our future uh, programs later on. And I hope you will stay updated with POSA. We are very, very active on our social media platforms especially on instagram so you can follow us this is important follow us on posa iim on instagram because we post all the announcements from the department all the announcements from the kulia and uh, we are planning to share a lot of um, informations that we can uh, share with you guys on the platforms um uh with posa's program you are we are not aiming to just uh, help you develop your skills in the in the uh, field of political science. We hope that we can equip you with skills that can, you know, help you also secure uh, jobs in other career paths. So uh, we hope that you will be able to join us in our future programs. Um, yeah, I think that's all. If anything, you get you guys can just you know drop us an email at posa. Uh, I, uh, political science I, I, um, or any um, direct message to our social media platforms. So thank you so much for joining guys. Thank you so much Sister Iman for a meaningful speech. Okay, before we end our mass gathering, I would like to invite all of you to open your camera for a photography station. Thank you for your cooperation. Okay, ready? One, two, okay, wait. Okay. okay, one, two, three. Okay, once again. One, two, three. Okay, then. Thank you so much, Sister Aisha. So we have reached uh, the end of our event. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to take this opportunity to express our gratitude to all of you for coming. 
we apologize for and uh, express our regret for any shortcoming and the technical difficulties earlier. For more information and announcements, you can follow us on our social media on Twitter at POSA RIUM underscore, on Instagram at POSA RIUM, and like us on our Facebook page, POSA RIUM. We will now end our session with the recitation of Tasbih Kafarah and Surah al Thank you so much and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you everyone. Assalamualaikum. Thank you everyone. Salam. Thank you doctor. Thank you. 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 Bye. Bye.